Before we begin, special thanks to the people at 11-Bit Studios for providing me a copy of this game. And if anyone's wondering, yeah, I actually won a game recently, Altilla Ryza. If you guys want me to do a showcase on that, let me know. But anyway, this little something that I really wanted to try out, and I really couldn't say no to that. So, let us get started with my showcase of the game, Children of Morta. And if anyone's wondering, yeah, Children of Morta is an RPG. And you guys know I'm a sucker for them. How clever. Really clever. I'm not kidding. These guys really know their stuff. And yes, it's already available on PC and other consoles. But I figured, why not show the game off on the Switch? And having it on the Switch would be an instant seller, in my opinion. <sighs> and yeah, the load times do take a while, but hey, not one at fault with it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is Children of Morta. About to start things off. This is just a showcase, and this one has five save slots. So, yeah, if you want to have, like, one save slot where you can enjoy a game and another like that, there's always that. So, there's also the options menu. You can have it in different languages, but I stick with English. Gameplay has subtitles, aim assist, screen shake, and vibration. You have your audio. Alright, let's get started. Margaret awoke, startled, a cold sweat clinging to her. She gathered her thoughts. Aged wood creaked, echoing through the quiet rooms. Near the house stood a shrine to Rhea Dana, goddess and daughter of the land, of Rhea and a being of comfort. Margaret sought answers. But the goddess did not speak. There was only the faint whisper of something dark something hungry. The old seer's bones felt the weight of their age as she climbed. The only thought on her mind, has it begun again? John's mission would be a simple one. He was to investigate Rhea's greatest shrine. His mother presented him with a fresh divinity shard. From his brother came a newly sharpened sword. His wife gave him a kiss and his daughter's 
hogs were full of reason to return home safe. Wow. I'm already five minutes in and this story is already getting me enticed. It really is, because I won't lie. A story where it involves action, adventure, fantasy. They are the avenues of what RPGs are all about. And I won't lie to you, I'm a sucker for these things. Okay, now we're going to get to the good stuff. Use the left analog stick to move. You have the Y button to attack, and the L button's to block. And you're going to be able to do this in any direction. And you can also use the right analog stick to attack as well. Oh, well, that's clever. Really clever. But anyway. Rhea. A land long forgotten. A place of unimaginable beauty. You're right, that is true beauty right there. Wait, what's this? Oh yeah, you can just hold it down to attack. And on the bottom left you see your health and your magic. It first appeared as sludge given life. Slithering creatures, small and vile. Small and vile, and I, I'm, I also like the narration. And yeah, defeating enemies will net you experience points, so recommending that you take them down, even if it is that small. Hide light for some reason. Although unlike hide light, this game is actually fun. Okay, now we move on to the next step. Evade attacks at the right time to avoid incoming damage. The evade bar under a character's feet shows when they can evade. You press the B button to evade. And yeah, the evade gauge refills over time. And you have to collect items to heal yourself. Like that, see? Simple. Taking down enemies is going to be necessary if you wish to survive the trials and tribulations ahead. I wonder if these things also double as save points. Well, we can always find out. A wall impeding further progress. A battle was certain. Now you have access to shield. John has a special ability to use a shield to block incoming attacks. John uses stamina to block with the shield. Heavier attacks consume more stamina. If he runs out of stamina, he'll, your shield will only block some of the damage, but not all of it. Okay, I'm starting at the idea now. Banished by light itself, the corruption abated, leaving the shard cold in hand, dark in need of life. And what you just saw was me interacting. You press the insert sections, you just have to press the A button to interact, which is a nice, nice little addition. That's right there is a statue. Greater, greater chests require a gemstone to open. Gemstones are found in different places, like, for example, this animal corpse. The shard grew warm, humming softly from the harnessed energy. Is it wrong that I actually like the narration? This is Alter's ignition. 
damages enemies burning fire. This is a Divine Grace, a powerful ally that aids you with a buff. This right there, there you go. It lets you damage enemies burning fire. Before him was now one more dangerous than those that came before. With this, we obtain a skill point. Gain experience as you kill enemies while reaching a certain amount of experience. You gain a skill point. You can use said skill points to upgrade your abilities in the systems tree. This, right there, gain enough. You can spend skill points to learn on skills. The selected abilities description can be seen on the right panel. Press A on the available skill to learn it. You have like different options. This one is Heaven Strike. More skills will become available as you spend more skill points. You don't have enough to reach level 2. But he also has the Shield of Thors, which can be upgraded to reduce damage. The Heaven Strike, which uses the X button. And the more you gain more skill points, guess what? You have requirements. And like that, see? The X button gives him access to the Heaven Strike. And each ability and attack has a cooldown. So, you don't want to be, like, firing it too recklessly. And I like the transition. Goblins, a familiar threat, albeit farther out than usual. Yeah, now we press the X button to try out our new skill. And you notice the skills on, the skills on cooldown. This should be made aware, but you can also level up said skills to make your attacks stronger. Inherently violent and ill-bathed, goblins were an unfocused but constant threat. They're pretty much the mooks here. Magnificent, but dangerous. A land of love found and of love lost. Why is this game making me want to appreciate this more and more? And I, I just, I don't have the right words. Before him was sacred ground, left untouched in days gone by. Remaining calm and collected, the shock of his heart skipping beats was concealed in expert fashion. Before him stood Linda, his eldest daughter, with bow and quiver at the ready, determined to do her part. So now we have a new party member. This one gives us Electropocalypse. Create the temporary aura that damages nearby enemies. This is added into the Codex. In addition, we have new party members. Yeah. This is the Divine Relic. You can use it in a fight to turn the tide in your favor. Press the R button. This, in this case, lets you form a shield that damages any enemy dumb enough to get nearby. But like most others, this one has a cooldown that is three times as long. 30 seconds. Before the Guardians were not beasts feeding, but monsters consuming, destroying others, they corrupted and distorted, creating even more hungry husks. Both father and daughter gathered their thoughts, their hearts heavier than before. How would they explain what they had witnessed?
to be honest, how can you explain it? I mean, this is just inhumane in so many levels. I mean, dear Lord, it's just... Ugh. The ancient tree had been cut down. Together, father and daughter described the horror, the creatures dripping with decay that slithered into bodies stuck between life and death to bolster their ranks. Grandma Margaret confirmed what they all feared. It was the corruption. A cruel entity spoken of only with hushed voices. An ocean of darkness that flowed from the top of Mount Morta. And the Bergson's duty was to stand against this devouring deluge of death. Kevin was also eager to do his part in the family's fight. Especially when his older brother Mark was off somewhere. He was as much a guardian of their mountain home as any of them. She stood. If they were to reach the summit and destroy this evil, as the Bergsons of old had done in the past, they would need the assistance of the sanctuary. Given to the Bergsons by Rhea herself, the sanctuary was a gateway to the mysterious lands around the mountain. Margaret pointed to the huge crystal at the center of the den, revealing their next task. To activate it and open the way to the source of the corruption. And once Rhea's three spirits are gathered on the grounds, the only gate to the top of Mount Morta will open in this chamber. By himself, or with the assistance of those who loved him, John needed to gather the three spirits from their lands. Without them, he would not be able to stem the flow of the corruption. I agree. So now it's time for us to head to our first destination, Kelbipo Caves. The webs litter the ground, walls, and ceilings. And it's here you can choose your characters. And you have six party members. And yeah, you can actually do a co-op with friends. So there's a plus. Bergsons can use mysterious eggs that they find to reset their abilities and re restore the skill tree. I like that. So for now, I will be using John. A celestial shard chipped directly from the ancient crystal in the sanctuary. It would be the Bergsons' lifeline. A tether to pull them back home before death's fateful whisper. Twenty minutes in and I'm enjoying this so much. I'm not kidding. I really am. And if anyone's wondering, the online replays regarding Terry Beauregard are going to be delayed a bit. Because version 6.1.0 dropped and my old replays just went poof. That's okay anyway because I'll be making new ones. Hopefully it'll be enough to satisfy you. Alright, this is the first area of the skill caverns. So cavern. And like on the top right of the screen, you get a map. The map actually shows you what you can do and where you want to go. And some will require gemstones. It 
worked. The Bergson began to slip away, wondering if this was death. But it's not. Yeah, and if you die, you're basically, well, you're, you're judged based on how you, how you do. So, this is going to require you to have to actually replay it multiple times you can study. They gasped for air as the celestial shard brought them back. A sensation no hero could become accustomed to. As she heard John and Linda describe their foray, thoughts rushed through Margaret's head. The corruption had amplified the creature's wickedness, and no longer were they part of the harmony of the Rhea. With the new threats looming, Margaret asked Ben to prepare his workshop. He would have to take charge of enhancing the warrior family's weapons and armor. Now it's here where you can upgrade and enhance your Uncle equipment. Ben reached out to the familiar warmth of the forge. If they were to reach the top of Mount Morta, their equipment would need to be of the highest quality. Now we have access to the workshop. Uncle Ben uses more to upgrade the entire family's weapons and armor, increasing their main attributes. These are the family's main attributes. The attributes description, can be seen on the right panel. Press A to upgrade. You can upgrade it with like 100 to upgrade your health. And there's also warfare, swiftness, agility, compulsion, resilience, sharp weapons, and precision. And you can now head to the chat to select. To check up on your family. When light faded from the sky and most were fast asleep, Mary would write about her family, immortalizing them for future generations. That's something else, you know. Now we're gonna try again and hopefully do better. But yeah, he has a skill point now. May as well work on upgrading the Shield of Thorns. Oh wait, you don't have it. It's skill level one. Gonna have to keep trying because it's a game like this where you're gonna, where you're gonna need to grind a lot so you can actually get stronger. But there is no consequence because what you accumulate will be transferred in and you can be able to upgrade your character's stats and abilities. And plus with six playable characters, this means that you can be able to replay missions and be able to like grind them up to get new skill points and whatnot. There's like a lot of possibilities. And hopefully this time I can do a better job at this game. And I should mention one other thing. The maps themselves, yeah, I should mention that yeah, they change. So if you plan on exploring this, don't expect it to be the same thing all the time. It randomizes and changes, which means you're going to be forced to be more strategic. So bear in mind, you're going to need to steal.
So far, so good. Take advantage of the evasion. Nice, get into the skill point. Oh, wait, it's the minus button. This allows you to. The Shield of Thorns. Melee tangers aim damage when they block the shield. gonna really help you. so good. Gotta recharge the shield. Nice, a divine gift. Charms are magical objects found in the land of Mordor. Each one of them has a special effect that can be activated by pressing down on the D-pad. They're consumed after being activated. You can only carry one charm with you before activating its effect. And this one, drop in the burn up. Create a vortex that pulls enemies in. Black Despair. So good. This is why you gotta watch what you do. And yeah, some some charms actually have like a lot of cooldown. So if you plan on using it, use it only when you know you're gonna make good make good on your mark. Very good. 
Let's see where this takes us next. Not bad so far. Nice. We found the finish room portal. Press and hold up on the D-pad to teleport back to it from anywhere on this floor. This gives us Bramble Wrappings. It's added to items in the Cotex. This one lets you damage enemies on contact. Alright, so let's see where this is going to lead us next. Moving is more important than reaching. Yeah, we reached the second half of the cell caverns. Now, Hal still hasn't recovered, unfortunately. Means we're gonna have to really be careful. Yep, I'm already down to nine health. Nice, gain another skill point. Ah. Well, it's as far as I can go. Reach the second half, killed 138 enemies, and got a lot of morph, which I can use to level up. Did not get any gemstones, and did not get any points healed. Which is a bummer and a half. 85 points healed. Wow, that's a lot. Oh yeah, I forgot to press the A button. That's on me. Kevin's need to help all began when his elder brother Mark left the house. His brother was strong, making any near him feel safe. But he left Kevin. Though Uncle Ben knew what his nephew needed, a focal point for his aspirations. And I also like that this game provides backstory on many of the characters. Now let's head to the workshop to see if we can level up most, most of our gear. Let's boost our attack damage. A mother away from her child would cause worry even in the best of times. This was far from the best of times. It had been more than a year since Mark, Mary's eldest son, had gone to live in the monastery deep in the forest. The same forest was now the source of such worrying news. There's a lot. 
Uncle Ben pondered over a map he received from a refugee. The silk caverns were a twisted maze of dead ends and venomous nests. But somewhere along the right path, Anea Dyer, spirit of the Caldipo Caves, rested. Well, let's see if we can try again on this one. Uh-huh. Already leveled up, already grinded up. And I know I'm gonna keep trying until I'll at least be able to build up most of my skills and what. And yeah, you gain a skill point, but I can't do anything with it until I reach level four. This one was like, which like increase the sword, increase the max health of all family members. Then you have John's armor. Then you have Guardian Rage. And then after that you have Father's Authority. Then Father's Protection and then Father's Passion. I'm not kidding. This it's a game like this where you not only have to be the most patient, but you also have to make sure that expect to grind a lot if you want to survive this game. And yes, you're going to have to be grinding a lot of more, meaning that you have to try, die, try, die, repeat. And it repeats until hopefully you're strong enough to tackle the challenges ahead. But is it any less infuriating? No, it's not. It's a fun game that I feel it should be worth your time. But expect to spend a lot of it if you want to make sure you come out of this alive. Just saying. Let's also not forget that the maps are randomized, meaning you don't even know what to expect. Because if you're expecting the same thing to happen the last time, heck no. It doesn't work that way in this one. And you'll also notice that... Okay, I think we've done that enough. At least I got a gemstone. Yeah, you actually get more more gold by slaying, not like increasing your like your count on taking down so many enemies. Can the body endure the mind's gamble? Okay, what's this? Nuts. Can the body endure the mind's gamble? I can't believe I botched it. Oh yeah, I also have a skill point. But I can't use it yet until I reach level 4. So far, so good.
Nice. That's better. Now they turn into monsters. No, I'm being serious. They turn into mon monstrous creatures. They don't care about... Okay, so it's on the left. What about on the right? Oh dear. Look at that, he's not even, he's stuck there. That's a lot of pocket change. And yeah, most times if you just stand there, you'll be able to regain some health, but not a lot. Very good. change. Nice, I get some health back, but not a lot. Oh dear. Not good. That's better. Two hundred and thirty one. I can have enough to level up further. So good. This lets us get the Dragon Assault. Summon the dragon that damages enemies and leaves a damning pool. Or just summon the dragon that damages. Well, let's see where the next leg takes us. If I don't get any further, I may do another video on this, but this game is just too good and I just want to show it off. The thinnest strands of white fibers coated the ground and walls, evidence of the silk caverns living up to their name. And I also like the narration. The stations.
heading down. That did it. I'm almost getting at skill point to reach level four. Oh boy, I don't want to get near that. Nice, reach level four. Now let's make use. Let's make use of it. I'm at skill level two. And this unlocks their own unique set of family traits. This is the family trait. They benefit all other family members as well. If a family member grows in strength, so does the entire family. So with this, of the same blood, all increases the max health of all family members. Our next objective now is to focus on either the Guardian's Rage or the Age Vigil. I think it'll focus on the Guardian's Rage. Head of the exit, but all right. Let's see where this leads. Okay, now let's see if we'll be able to manage this because it's boss fight. We're about to face our first boss. This one is a feather pin, which increases your evasiveness. All eight eyes studied the one so willing to walk into their own tomb. This is the first boss. And I'm gonna end up dead, but at least I tried my best with it. The base Bergsons have fallen in the burrow. Which means we lasted 111 minutes, killed 133 enemies, gathered 130, like a lot of more, mind you, gathered some gemstones, and healed up. And yeah, it's going to take a while for me before I actually get strong enough to tackle this. But that's what makes this game really so different, yet challenging. A set of daggers made just for him. They would be his guide to finding himself, his focal point. The boy tested them. They felt good, not too heavy, not too light, like an extension of himself. Uncle Ben suggested a few practice swings outside. The daggers sliced the air, guided with an easy grace. His nephew was clearly a natural with the blades and would be ready to join his father and sister in no time. But the boy's mother had words on that subject. Two of her children were already risking their lives and she would not have her precious little boy out there as well. Regretfully, he took the daggers away. Who was he to argue with a mother when it involved her child? Hey.
handing over the daggers was like abandoning a part of himself. He was meant for them, meant to be out there fighting for what was right. He just needed to convince them. And I know it will not be easy to convince them either. Trust me, it just won't, period. There's like a lot to do. And we've gotten more than enough that we can now upgrade to the next one. Let's level up this to upgrade our movement speed. And hopefully once we get enough, we can focus on the armor up and the warfare. But eventually we'll be unlocking a lot of other things. And this is where I will pretty much stop here because to be honest, I could just keep going if I wanted to. But I don't want to take too long. So I do want to thank everyone who enjoyed this little showcase of Children of Morta. This game will be available on the Nintendo Switch in a matter of days. It is available now on PC and other consoles, but I recommend if you plan on get if you plan on getting one version, do so on the Switch. Not to mention the game has co-op, which means you and a friend can team up to kick butt like never before. If you enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button. It means a lot to me. Do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. Special thanks once again to 11 Bit Studios for providing me a copy of this game. And if you guys want more, just feel free to tell me, and I'll see what I can do. This is Mega Man NJ signing off. Peace out.